Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Athlete POV Podcast. My name is Charlie Pellucci, your host. Today we're sitting down with Zoe, an Austin P State soccer commit. She's from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. She has a crazy athletic family, and she's ready to make an instant impact next year for the Govs. What's up, Zoe? What's up? With Athlete POV, we're interviewing a different NCAA athlete every week, just digging through their brain, getting to know them, seeing what secrets they have for like really how they've made an impact in college or impact to get to college on a, on a scholarship. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Hey everyone, Charlie here, founder of Athletic Minds. Just wanted to say that the first episode of Athlete POV is sponsored by Bandit Labs, the supplement brand that I use most often in the gym. Bandit Labs is a pre-workout stimulant that offers a wide variety of flavored pre-workout. My favorite is the Blue Lemonade and I take it just about every time I hit the gym. Other flavors include Pink Lemonade, Pina Colada, and Lemon Lime. They also offer four different levels of stimulation, the strongest and most effective being called that mf -er. The main benefit of Bandit Labs and why they're different from other products at your local store is that with Bandit Labs pre-workout, I've been more intensely focused than any other product I've ever tried, and I've seen a crazy increase in my pumps during and after working out. It'll have your veins popping, hence increasing your vascularity big time. Another crazy aspect I've noted is that the powder basically melts inside your drink. If you're lazy like me sometimes, you'll find Bandit Labs a fast and easy process for making your pre-workout drink. You can use the Athlete POV discount code at checkout, STAYHARD1, for 10% off your entire order. That's in all caps, S-T-A-Y-H-A-R-D-1. Now let's get into it. So what I found really interesting is that the college you committed to, Austin P. State, is only a couple hours from where you live in Murfreesboro in Tennessee. Uh, did that play a big impact on your decision at all? And did you have other schools that were interested in you? Yes, I had several other schools that interested in me. Most of them that I was talking to was Mississippi State, Alabama, and Middle Tennessee the most. Hmm. But for me, like, I wanted a school that wasn't too far, but was, like, a good distance to where I could be dependent and learn how to be on my own, but where I could also drive back and see my family. Once in a while. Yeah, I mean, a lot of family plays a big role in decisions. I mean, some people go far away, some people stay real close. Uh, it's really all personal preference and like whatever the best fit is. So obviously, you pick the best one as of right now, and I'm sure you're excited to to get started there. But I also, I really just wanted to hear a quick little brief summary about your family, like where you come from, and how do they really influence you? Um. So my real dad, he is a former player of the University of Hawaii for football. Um, also on the practice squad for the Miami Dolphins. My dad definitely has put a big mindset for me of how mental tough he is. And that's where I get my from. Like he's always been like a hard driven person and like no matter what's going on, he'll always work through it. And then my mom, she was an IFBB pro for women's bodybuilding. And then my dad is former Miss Olympia 2019. And he's still competing. He actually just left to go in the Arnold. Oh, wow. It's another big one. So <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Now, you, not a lot of kids can say their parents are that high up there with, like, sports, you know. So that's pretty cool. And then I have younger brothers that also play football. One of them, he just got ranked the second best running back in the nation for his group. And then I have another brother in Las Vegas. He just came back from Nationals with his team. And he got boys there. Wow, so they're both football? Yeah. Oh, Wow. I remember when I was younger, we, I, my team, we went to like some nationals in Florida for, in, by Disney. And that was just mm -hmm. one year where my team went. So yeah, I guess, yeah, I understand how that's pretty cool. So if I'm getting this right, you committed to Austin Peay State women's soccer, but you also played on a couple teams beforehand, like a club team, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee Soccer Club, and then Rockville uh, High School. Could you just go in depth about your history of soccer experience, like how it all started for you? Yeah. So most people, they'll start from like four years old. I started a little bit later. I started at nine, and I played for one of the small travel teams at first called Strikers. It was in Murfreesboro, where I live. And then after that, I went to Nashville Ball Club. That was my second club I at. And then after that, I went over to Tennessee Soccer Club, which is the club that I'm at now. But I played at Tennessee for a few years, and I got recognized by a men's pro player, and he a little bit, 
and he opened up a soccer preparatory school. So he got me a spot there in Nashville, and then I was there for a little bit. And then one day, he got me to go out to Texas to train with somebody and train with FC They're a pretty big club in Texas. So it was a big practice. We um, After that, they offered me a spot in there. And the trainer there was, like, a great trainer. Mm-hmm. So I'd have to deal, like, I would go and live up there with another family because I could my whole family. So I was 12 at the time. So I moved up there for about half a year. And then I came back because, like, as a 12-year-old, like, it's hard living without your family. I bet, I yeah. mean, but I stuck for six months. And then I came back. And then ever since, I've been at Tennessee Soccer Club. Wow, yeah. I mean, I can imagine being 12 years old and already living with another player's family because solely of that sport. So, I mean, one, that just means you were that good to be able to do that. And, like, it was worth it to do that. And two, I mean, that's just really, like, mental toughness right there to be away from your family just for, uh, just for sports, which is pretty cool as well. So another really interesting topic, I think, is really good to talk about with, these, with athletes like you is your music. Like, what, is, what do you listen to? Some of the artists that are really, like, in your head all the time? And do you have, like, a training or pregame ha- playlist? And how does that differentiate? I really just want to get to know your process. My pregame has a lot of Drake and NBA Youngboy. And if I'm in a weird mood, I'll turn on some, like, Post Malone or some Lil Baby. So with all that different artists, do you have, like, a different pregame and training playlist? Or do you just go off, like, how you feel in that certain moment? Um, I go off what I feel in a certain moment for me. Hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're in, like, a really, like, hype mood, you mean, NBA, NBA Youngboy is probably a good artist for that. But, like, if you're just chill vibes, I mean, Post Malone is, like, that guy to just, to just vibe to. Probably is how you're feeling. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And I know some people, like, don't even listen to music. Some people, like, have one thing they always listen to that gets them going. But really, it's all about just what gets you in the zone for, like, that very moment. Like, you can listen to whatever you want. You can, like, not listen to anything. But if it doesn't get you going or you don't, like, have the correct, like, energy into, like, doing what you're about to do, there's not really a point. And it's just really, like, you have to be in the right mindset, I feel. Yeah, for sure. Music is a big part of my pregame and, like, when I'm going and stuff. Cool, yeah. So at Austin P. State, you're going to have a major, and you need to be doing something academically in school besides playing sports. So what do you think that is, and how do you think what you're doing is going to be influence you after sports is over? Um, for me, it was between my exercise. I chose exercise science. Because, like, when I get older, I want to be in, like, the coaching field. And, like, right now, I think it just to, like, get a feel for it, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, exercise science, coaching fits right, fits right in. I mean, my dad actually was exercise science, and he's actually a teacher now. So I guess that actually relates to, like, uh, what you just said. That's pretty cool. So part of being an athlete, especially a college athlete, is having a pretty solid, dedicated training schedule. And I know you probably have something similar to that. Could you go into what it's like for you on a daily basis, training for the sport that you play? Yeah, so what I used to do when I went to my preparatory school, most trainings a day go from morning to midday, and I am bring outside of that school. But now I'll do today before school and after school hmm. right right and I know you mentioned before how you would go to school you would go to, you would train before school what what time would that be at because I know school start in the morning and you'd have a whole training thing and then maybe eat something so how, how does that work for you yeah I'll usually be at the gym at 4 30 or if I wake up a little late I'll go to 5 30 to um until school then after school, I'll either have team practice or I'll have speed and ability and then my personal soccer team. It just depends, like, what I'm on that mm. day. Wow. 4.30 Four, in the morning is a real dedication point. I mean, not a lot of athletes wake up that early to train. Not a, a lot of athletes wake up that early to do anything. 
So, I mean, that's just another step ahead for you, and I'm sure it's paid off in the long run, and it already has, just because, I mean, not everyone's committed to college to play Division One soccer. So, I mean, that's a really big step ahead for you, I think, um, that you should be proud of. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Another part of Athlete POV is I just want to get your take on how COVID affected you, because I know it's been here for now about two years, and I'm sure it affected you and your sports and college and this, the process for that. So I just want to hear from you how it affected you. It was definitely hard, like, it's not just me, but my class in general, just because, like, for colleges, you couldn't contact for a certain time, so we'd have to wait until the dead period would lift, and then when they say it would lift, they would end it, so mm. it was kind of a process, couldn't really talk to colleges, so, like, halfway through your junior year, so it was hard for me. But I, it was lucky because I got a scholarship at a D1 school, and I didn't think I was going to. But hmm. Right, because I know a lot, of, a lot of schools and a lot of sports, they gave all their seniors like an extra year of eligibility because of COVID. So I'm sure there was less spots available, and it just narrowed down like the, the spots open for, for athletes to earn scholarships for the past couple of years. So that's really, really good of you. I mean, really, like... Should be a pretty good accomplishment to be able to to say that you got a scholarship during these times. So that's pretty cool, I think. Mm -hmm. The last thing we ask here on Athlete POV is to the athlete, mm -hmm. if they have any advice they could give to any other athlete struggling with any mental health issues they might have or any hardships they're going through. So really right now, I just want to see if you have any advice for, for anyone out there. Um, I think mental toughness is, is a big thing for athletes. Like, if you have a coach that's like mentally draining you or if you're in an injury, I think those are like the two biggest things that have been hardest for me. Being an athlete, like when I'm injured, I have nothing to do. Like I can't go train or play. And like usually for athletes, sports is like somewhere where you can go and get away from things. But like when I'm wrong, it just kind of feels like everything else is. So I think being mentally tough outside of sport also important right right because as you mentioned before where you said if you're injured you have nowhere to go really if you're dealing with anything so i guess that's probably the toughest aspect what i'm getting at that's going to wrap it up for the second episode of athlete pov i want to thank zoe for coming on and i hope you have a great day thanks for having me